Well, let's see what happens. Oh. <laughs> We're running into a little bit of a problem with the electrical here. Yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. What is up, guys? 70 Savage here, coming at you today with another episode of having no idea what I'm doing and figuring it out along the way. Today, we are doing a very exciting project. We are gonna be building the bed in the back of our camper van here. This ain't no regular camper van bed. This is gonna be a bed lift system. Before we get started, if you are new to the channel, we have been converting this camper van right here. We've been building everything inside of this DIY from the electrical system to the plumbing system to all the cabinetry. And we're getting pretty darn close to completing this thing and starting to travel around in it. Let's go ahead and dive right in. So first things first, why did I end up choosing to go with a bed lift system? as opposed to all of the other types of beds that you can put in a sprinter van. A lot of people will do a fixed bed system that just attaches on both sides, does not move in any way. That's a really good cost-effective and simple solution. Other people will do a Murphy bed system where the bed folds up into the side of the van. Then when you wanna sleep on it, comes down. You can save a ton of space with a bed like that and it can open up the back area so that you can actually use it when it's in Murphy mode, I guess. By the way, who is this Murphy? And uh, why did he name the bed after himself? Another extremely common bed is the panel bed system. You can buy these kind of pre-made from different manufacturers. They have multiple panels in them with multiple mattress sections and you can remove the panels to make the bed smaller or add the panels to make the bed bigger. You can take all three of the panels out and then you just have a large cargo area. And then finally, the bed that we designed and engineered in our last van is a sliding bed system. So half of the bed can be slid into the back half of the bed, opening up an entire section of the van. In the last build, we used part of that opening to have a shower section, but in this van, we are doing none of those, and we are gonna be doing what's called a bed lift system. A bed lift system just means that the bed can lift up and down in the back of the sprinter van. You can do things like put the bed in a tall position and put things like bikes underneath it, or you can put the bed all the way in its lowest position and have a really easy to access bed that's easy to get in and out of. And going a little bit deeper, there are a few types of ways to actually accomplish a bed lift system. I think the most popular one in vans is called the Happy Jack bed lift. It's a pretty robust, bed lift system that's kind of chain driven. I was super, super close to going with that, but we are not going to be doing it. The second option is typically what more DIY people will do, and it involves linear actuators, which are these pieces of hardware that you can buy like on Amazon or anywhere on the internet. The method that we are using for our bed lift system that hopefully ends up working is very similar to what they use in like the Winnebago Revel. I'm actually pretty sure this is the exact model of bed lift system that they use in the Revel. It's called the Lippert or LCI Euroloft bed. Sorry for the long-winded intro, but I wanted to explain all of the different options that I considered before we start making this one. So now let's go ahead and crack open the box with the bed lift system in it and see what's up. So we just got this puppy open and my initial impressions are that this is actually very well engineered. Overall, it seems like a pretty simple system. We have the bed platform itself that contains the motor allowing it to move up and down. The straps are also underneath there. We've got two guide rails that are gonna help keep this thing aligned as it's going up and down. And then we have all of the electrical and mounting hardware. The only problem that's kind of immediately obvious is how flippin' small this bed platform is. This is basically like a large dog bed if I were to have to describe it. So now I think what I'm gonna do is just loosely place this platform inside of the van and start getting a feel for where I actually want to mount all the different componentry. All right, so we got the platform set in here. Before we actually start ripping this whole thing apart, I think it's probably smartest to just try and make the default system work. Let's see if we can get it working exactly the way that it came out of the box. All righty, y'all, we got each one of the four corners mounted up. The first way that we did it were these two back ones. I just used number 10 stainless sheet metal screws, and uh, I looked it up. Each one of these screws has about 300 pounds of shear strength, and then the back ones here are attached to our 8020 frame, so we just used quarter 20 bolts into our regular old T-nuts inside of the 8020 profiles. Each one of these bolts has a shear strength of about a thousand pounds. So yeah, we're gonna be good. It is now time for the moment of truth. Let's go ahead and test this puppy out. All right, he got our key in the on position and let's see what happens. Oh, <laughs> thing just immediately swung. 
which I guess makes sense. Let's keep on trying it, see if we can make it a little higher. I think it's fair to say that this thing works. So for the next step, we're actually gonna do the electrical. So I'm gonna rig this up. It'll be pretty simple, and then I'll give you guys an overview when it's done. Every time I put in a fuse, it, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. So because of that short, I actually came back to my computer here and diagrammed this wiring harness out because I'm extremely confused as to why this could be happening. Alrighty, so uh, to demonstrate just how dumb I am, basically, that's what I needed to do. So I'm happy we were able to forge through the electrical despite not having any sort of wiring diagram. It was completely guesswork. So now that we've proven we have liftage, it is time to move on to the next step. We are basically going to delete this entire bed frame as it is right now and make our own 100% custom bed frame. Before we go out and start cutting our very expensive 8020 aluminum extrusions, I did make a quick mock-up of what our bed platform is going to look like. It's this thing right here. So building out of 8020, is very, very simple. I use these T-nuts here, which slot directly into the slots on the 8020 aluminum extrusions. And then I take a small bolt as well as an 8020 angle bracket to attach each extrusion to the next one. The entire structure for this van was built out of these four components. You can see more details in the 8020 video popping up on the screen right here. All right, so we have transplanted the drive shaft and motor here, which was pretty dang easy. I was able to just drill holes in different pieces that already came with this drive shaft and motor, and they attached pretty easy to some 8020. It is now time to test out our custom bed frame. Check it, check it, y'all. We got lifted. Let's see how high it goes. Hopefully I don't break anything. We have a lot more finishing touches to actually build out the metal part of the bed frame here. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. So our frame of our bed frame is now complete. So now what we need to do is put some plywood on top of this bad boy so that we have a nice smooth platform to lay our mattress on top of. We're gonna use the same half inch pre-finished maple plywood that we used in the rest of the van. This right here is pretty much my recipe for cutting any of the wood pieces in the van. I'll put a link to all this in the description below. Oh, giddy, I've made myself a plate of wholesaw biscuits. They're quite delicious. So we now have our holy wood mounted to the top of the skeleton that we made and it fits pretty dang good. There are a couple of reasons that I drilled all these holes. Reason number one, you wanna have some ventilation for the mattress that sits on top. You don't want any moisture to get trapped inside of the mattress and it's a mold over time. And if you've ever sat on a mattress that's on a non-ventilated surface, it's kind of like an awkward like, and then the air kind of pushes out the sides. And then the second reason for these holes, kind of a side effect is that it makes the plywood lighter. And finally, after all of the work that we've put into this bed, it is completely done. Let's go ahead and give it the old college try. Oh. <sighs> By the way, we obviously do not have our mattress yet. That is something that I'm gonna have to order custom and then install in the future. But when I figure something out, I'll put the link to where I bought that mattress in the description below. And just to prove to you guys, if I put all of my weight on just one side of the mattress, uh, I can do awkward pull up thingies. Jeez, I need to start going back to the gym. I feel like it's very, very sturdy. It's definitely gonna hold all of my weight. And not just my weight, you could probably get three or even four people on here and it would be just fine. On the long side, the bed is a little bit over 76 inches long. And then most of the bed, except for this very back section here, is about 61 inches wide. I can give you guys a quick demo of the height range that this thing goes up and down between. This is actually a pretty darn convenient height for a bed. It's very easy for me to kind of just plop down onto the top of it. Very easy for me to get out as well. And although this is the height that I would prefer to sleep at as it is the most comfortable being the lowest, there's no way you're gonna be able to fit something like a mountain bike underneath here. Thankfully, we have a solution for that.
This right here is the maximum height that I can get the bed to. It's actually pretty high in the air. I'd say it's almost six feet off the ground here. Not quite, maybe like high fives. I can easily go underneath it and kind of navigate around under here. But most importantly, look at how much storage space we now have in the back of this van. If it's ever the zombie apocalypse, I could probably fit like literally thousands of canned beans back here. And then if I want to take it somewhere into the middle position, it is still very much low enough to sleep on, although it's a little bit awkward to get in at this height. And it's tall enough off the ground to fit mountain bikes. That was one of the big things in my last van is that I kind of had to sacrifice having mountain bikes inside of the van because it was so awkward trying to get on and off the bed when it was that high. But in this van, that is not the case. We have to make zero sacrifices to live in here. A little bit of an exaggeration. It is still a van, but it's a really, really comfy one. So overall guys, I am really, really happy with how this thing turned out. I think for this van layout, this is the best possible bed system that I could have possibly wished for. It was about three thousand dollars in total i know that almost everything in this van is insanely expensive and honestly i would not be able to do any of this if it wasn't for you guys who watch these videos if a lot of y'all end up watching this video and subscribing from it then i will do a full in-depth review after i've used it a few times kind of similar to how i did my in-depth review on the bed system from last year so thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you guys next time